Is that any better? For some reason, the, um, the microphone wasn't selected in the software. I don't know why. Um, let me know now if that, is, if that is any better. Hopefully it is. Yeah, there's always something with the live shows. There's always something that goes wrong. Um, anyway, I'll start talking again. Paladins of the West Kingdom, two videos today. Live unboxing now. There we go, it's working. Uh, and then in just under an hour from now, 58 minutes time, I'm gonna be doing a playthrough of this. Uh, this has been on my pile of opportunity for quite a while now. Uh, Shem sent me a copy of the game a couple of months ago and it's been sat there staring at me. Literally, it's been sat over there staring at me. Not kidding. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very keen to try it like a lot of the other games that I've had. Uh, and tonight we're gonna be playing over Tabletop Simulator. Shem is here as well. Hi Shem, thank you for joining in. Uh, yeah, we're going to be playing over Tabletop Simulator because of COVID. Can't have people around to play it, but there is a Tabletop Simulator mod and that's what we're going to be using for tonight. Right, let's dive into the unboxing. Uh, now, unlike some of my other unboxings, I can actually now tell you a bit about this game because I've spent the last hour reading the rulebook. So I do know something about it. Um, apart from, which is this in the series? Because there's a whole series of games. I think there's a trilogy of them. And I, I can't remember which one this is. Let me know in the chat. Is this, I don't think this is the first one. I think this might be the third one. Paul says it's freezing in Devon. Right, I've not been outside. Whereabouts are you, Paul? I'm sure we've had this description before, but I can't remember whereabouts you are in Devon. Anyway, we've got the rule book. I'll come back to the rule book later on. Uh, Shem was very kind enough to send me the metal coins. So I have the metal coins as well, which are an optional extra. 50 pieces metal coins, and they're really nice. Um, but I'm going to take everything out first, and then let's see what we've got. This is the second one, says Leonardo. Thank you very much. So the second one in the series. First one was... I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> right, now, obviously, small box, but it's filled with stuff. There's a lot of punch boards in here. No, there isn't. There's two punch boards, and the rest of it is the player boards. Let's just pop that to one side. Let's do the main board first. I say, uh, I say the main board. The main board actually comes in uh, two sections. In fact, yeah, we've got player boards. Now, oh, this is the main board. Right, so the main board is here. And this is in two sections, which you actually put end to end. Um, I think like that. No, the other way around. Like that. There you go. You can tell from the artwork. Does that just about fit on camera? Yeah, just about fits on camera. Anyway, so yeah, this is the main board. This is where you will put these cards here, um, which are King's favor, King's orders and King's requests or favors, I think. Uh, basically, these, these are for everybody. There are spaces here where players can place things. So this is a shared board for all players. And there will be card, cards placed above this board and below this board. So there's the shared central board and then each player has one of these player boards now this <laughs> now if if you're scared of these icons don't be because i've read the rule book uh, as i say it took me about half an hour read through it and i feel confident that i can play the game the iconography is pretty intuitive you will be placing your workers on these spaces if it's a clear space you can put any type of worker there if it's a colored space you can only put a worker of that color and these are the different actions that you can do and you can only do each action once per turn because when you do the action, you put pieces on it. Um, there is one way that you can actually remove them, which is the, the prey action. It allows you to remove them so you could then do it again. But each player is going to be taking their own actions by putting their own workers on their own board. Oh, there's an expansion coming up for this. More actions to take. I didn't know that. Right. OK. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So each player gets one of these. So there are four player boards and these are... Uh, yeah, they're folded so that they fit in the box and the other side is used when you're playing the solo game. So yeah, one of the other sides uh, I think is used in, in the solo game. So there we go. There's the player boards. We have two punch boards, one of which is the coins. So I'm going to check the centering. Yeah, looks good. Let's do Paul's punch test. Okay, yeah, looks good. They're, they're, they're catching, but yeah, as you can see, they shake and they come off. Punch them from the back. Yeah, nothing's nothing's tearing. So we're all good there. Right, that's that punch board. That's for the money. So they are the coins that come with the with the actual game. As I said, the metal coins are optional extra. 
Uh, and then we have these. These are provisions. Yeah, these are punching out pretty much just the same as well. Um, so yeah. Oh, that one's not. There you go. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So two punch boards with that stuff on. I think this is the start player marker. I think it is. Right. Okay. Uh, we've then got lots of wooden bits. Lots and lots of wooden bits. Um, and I'm actually going to show you how you set up one of the player boards. So yeah, each player is going to have a player board. Yeah. So lots, lots of bits in this game. So at the start of the game, you will place... Uh, these, which are, he says, quickly looking at the rule book, workshops. That's it. You will put your eight workshops on here. So there's a little bit of setup for your own player board. You put your workshops on there at the start of the game. So each player will have eight of those. So these are, these are custom shaped uh, little houses. That one's fallen over. Um, you will also have outposts. And you get seven of these. These go on here. Again, these are little custom shaped little meepers as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So everybody gets seven of those. Uh, then there is, what's the thing that goes? Monks, that's it. These ones. Are they these ones or these ones? These ones. These are the monks. And again, you'll, you will fill these spaces with monks. There you go. And then the last thing I think you put on your player board are these jugs. Now, these jugs have numbers on them. Um, and everybody gets basically uh, one of each in numeric order. So there's a five, there's a seven, eight, nine... Is there a six? There's a three. There you go. One, three, five, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, so everybody gets a set of jugs. Uh, and I think that's it. Oh no, you, you also get a bit on the left-hand side as well. The, that's it. So there are three things in this game that you're keeping track of. There's faith, there's strength, and there's influence. So everybody gets one of these markers. These go on the left-hand side. And as the game goes on, you are going to be increasing these uh, and moving up and various actions of the game will so if, if we look at the commission action just to give you an idea uh, of how the game plays the commission action requires you to have a certain level of faith but it gives you influence the fortify action requires you to have a certain level of influence but it gives you strength and so on and so forth so there is a connection between them depending on what you want to do uh, and every time you see a number in this yellow banner that's victory points so you can see the further these go up the more points you're going to get at the end of the game if you build uh, all the way up to here with your factories, uh, deploy these monks, build these fortifications or whatever, that gets you points. And you will add up the points at the end of the game. So yeah, one of the things that you're doing in the game, I mean, you've got lots of different options, but you can basically develop and you can see the develop action is here. And if you've played Orleon, this works in a similar way. You can basically place one of these and some of these action spaces have dotted lines around them. So you could, if you wanted to develop and put a um, workshop there, and that means using this action from now on will cost you only two workers instead of three. I'm not going to go through all of them, but that's essentially how that works. You see that you've uncovered an icon there. And every time you uncover an icon, you get that particular bonus. Uh, and then on the main board up here, uh, this is where you will be placing monks to do commissions. And you will also be placing, I believe, garrisons on, on this board as well covering up these and getting various bonuses. There will be cards dealt out here. Uh, the cards will require either faith or strength to get, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, there are characters that will go here uh, and so on and so forth. Anyway, that's the player board. Uh, as I say, might look a little confusing at the start, but it, it is all fairly... I, I think the, the graphic design and the iconography is very clear. Um, I'll find out in... 59 minutes time. No, 49 minutes time. I can't even count. Right. Let's have a look at the cards because as well as all of those. Oh, no, more wooden components. The workers. So these are the workers, little custom shaped meeples. Uh, there are five of them. 
and you will get a certain number of these each round. I think you start with six. You can get extra workers as the round goes on. Uh, and as I mentioned, you need different coloured workers to go onto the different spaces. So the green ones are scouts, the red ones are fighters, you know, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, there's a whole host of wooden meeples. Uh, these ones are criminals. Okay, so the purple ones are criminals. Um, these can be used as a wild card, but I believe that there is a downside to getting criminals. That's the bit in the rulebook that I need to go back and reread. It was clear, I just don't get it. Um, because when you get a criminal, you get money. And that's a good thing. I've not worked out what the downside of getting money, of getting the criminals is yet. But I'm, I'm just going to go back and read that bit in the rulebook uh, and try and make try and see if it sits in my head. Right, so lots of cards. This is how many cards there are. The first one I'm going to open up is these, which are the Paladins, because this is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Uh, and the way it works is each player has their own deck of Paladin cards. They're identical, um, I believe, apart from the artwork on the back, um, and I think the artwork on the front. Other than that, it's identical. Is that are they the are they the paladins? I'm not sure they are the paladins actually. I think these might be the paladins. Yeah, these are the paladins. Okay, so this is one player's paladin deck. Um, and then at the start of every round, you will draw, so that your deck will be shuffled. And at the start of every round, you will draw three cards from the paladin deck. <clears throat> one of them is your paladin for that round, the seven rounds in the game, which you will put into play. One of them will go face up on the top of your deck and one of them will go face up on the bottom. Love that mechanism. It's just giving people choice, but actually three choices in one. Which one do you want now? Which one do you want a choice of next round? And which one are you going to put to the bottom of your deck? So yeah, that that's the Paladins. Um, card quality. It's fine. Nothing wrong with that. If you're playing this game a lot and you're shuffling it a lot, you, you might want to sleeve them. Um, the thing is with sleeving cards, I, I don't know. I know some people don't like sleeving cards. I like to sleeve cards which I'm going to shuffle because I don't know whether they're going to wear or not. There's nothing worse for me for having a game where I think, oh, it's a great game. I love it. I play it 10 times. I don't sleeve the cards. And then after 10 plays, the cards are all worn and marked. I wish I'd have sleeved them. Whereas other games, cards are better quality and they don't mark as much. So we will see. We will see. Sleeves at the ready, says Mark. <laughs> yes. Uh, playthrough is listed on YouTube in 45 minutes time. Yes, you're absolutely right. 45 minutes time from now, we're doing a playthrough. Um, right, let's open up some of the other cards. And as I mentioned earlier, the playthrough tonight is going to be over tabletop simulator um, because, yeah, it's, it's just going to be easier to play this game over tabletop simulator. Um, okay, so they're paladin cards as well. How do you know which paladin card is for which player? I guess it's the artwork. I guess these are all one player. These are all another player. Yeah. And these are all another place. So, okay, so it's the back. Oh, that should be from there. Yeah, so it's kind of the background artwork, I think, that determines which player it's from. So these are the characters. Uh, characters you can either send on a quest and you basically get extra workers, or you can recruit them and it gives you special abilities during the game. Um, and then there's the little cards as well. So now these don't have a little tab on for me to get in. So teeth time. Oh. Okay, uh, Johan is saying they match the player boards. Right, okay. That's how you work out whose is whose. Are the player boards not all the same then? The player boards look the same. What am I missing? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, right. So, smaller cards. Um, right, these are the, the criminal cards. Yeah, lots of different types of cards here. So these are the King's Orders. These were the three that go on there. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Uh, and then these are the other ones. So what happens is these will, these will be dealt here, shuffled at random at the start of the game. They'll be placed there. Uh, these will be shuffled and these will be placed there. And in round one, you'll reveal this one. In round two, you'll reveal this one. In round three, you'll reveal that one and that one. Okay, 
tells you up here, all the iconography is on the board. And these are basically objectives. And if you've got these objectives by the end of the game, you'll get points. Whereas these are additional action spaces. So more action spaces unlock as the game goes on. Uh, the cranes are about building the walls. <clears throat> so you will be building walls above your thing here. And again, <clears throat> it will, <clears throat> excuse me, will unlock certain abilities. Uh, and the more walls you build, you'll get points at the end of the game. Um, you have these, which are the tavern cards. And these will be played onto the main board. Oh, no, they won't. They'll just be played out at random. Uh, and each round, each player will get to pick one of these. And this gives you, along with your paladin, it gives you your six workers that you're going to get for, for that round. Um, so, yeah, quite a few cards in this game. What are these ones? Don't know what these ones are. These might be the solo game. Yes, I think they're the solo game. Um... But yeah, lots of cards, lots of wooden bits, debts, you can take debts in the game. And what's interesting in this game is if you get a debt, you will lose three points at the end of the game. But if you manage to pay that debt off, the net gain is one point. So I think, again, never having played the game, um, but I think you want to take a debt and then pay it off. Johan is saying, where the debt goes, the artwork is different. Ah, yes, it is. Right. Okay, there you go. I can now see... The artwork there is different from there. So that's how you determine who gets which cards. Watch out for solo and promo cards. Right, I will. Although we're not playing with this physical version tonight. This is going to sit on my table next to me um, while we play on Tabletop Simulator uh, for tonight. Promo Paladins variants. Ah, that's probably what it is. I've probably got some promo tiles in there. <laughs> so I need to be careful about that. Um... So yeah, so this looks like it's a co-design uh, between Shem and SJ McDonald. As I say, there's lots of games um, uh, in this series and the other trilogy, but I've been told that this is one of the ones that I'm going to like the most. Certainly from reading through the rulebook, and the rulebook was pretty good, um, then yeah, it, it, you know, it looks like the kind of game I'm going to enjoy. Uh, is probably the kind of game that I'm going to want to play straight away afterwards because my first game tonight is going to be a learning game. I know the rules, but I'm just going to jump into the game and I'm just going to start doing random stuff um, and see what happens. That's it. Unless there's anything else you want to see, loads of components. Does all this fit back in the box? I hope it does. Um, yeah. If there's no other questions, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap things up. I'm going to go and get some ice cream. Um, I'm going to read through the rules again, and then in about 10-15 minutes or so, we're going to connect online. It's going to be with Rick and Adam tonight. Um, we're going to check that everything's working, make sure we're all set up. Um, and then, yeah, live streaming 40 minutes. So, yeah, if you want to see us playing through the game, it will be a, a tutorial and playthrough. I will be explaining the rules of the game uh, kind of as we play. So if you don't know how to play the game... It, tonight's video will serve as a as most as, as a tutorial but it will be mostly a playthrough um but yeah other than that thank you very much for watching take care everybody and i will see you in 40 minutes for the playthrough cheers all Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.